Next guest tell it may be dangerously more powerful. Texas Republican Congressman and former presidential candidate Ron Paul on the phone with me now. Congressman, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Neil. Good to be with you. This is a woman who has a history, uh, largely moderate in her rulings, but not so when it comes to the government assuming bigger roles and in input on key business issues. What do you make of that? Well, it's pretty scary, especially with the trend that's going on with the financial crisis happening and Congress rushing to support all the nationalization and all that is going on. It's, uh, it's really frightening. But it, it makes you stop and think, though, because she was originally uh, a George Bush senior appointee, so it, it doesn't really make me happy that, well, all we need is a Republican appointing these judges and we're going to be okay. But, no, I think this, this appointment, if this goes through, is just uh, adding fuel to the fire, a bigger government, more meddling, and more nationalization. You know, uh, I know a lot of people, Congressman, have talked about this, but I'm talking about the judge pick's age. At 55, she could be there quite a while. Um, and, and that means a, a sort of a permanence about her, assuming she gets confirmed. And as it does allow uh, President Obama likely to pick two more Supreme Court picks before his, mm -hmm. maybe even before his first term is out, we are talking about a generational shift in the court, are we not? Yeah, and, and the question isn't so much will she be here, but will would there be an economy here? Will there be a country? Will there be our liberties? <laughs> you know, we just can't continue to do what we're doing. I mean, we're... Uh, we're running on hot air right now. There's no productivity in, in reality when you consider the fact that we can create $2 trillion worth of credit and expect to stimulate everything. And with, with this burden, this additional burden of the courts weighing down on us, I, I think it's a, a very serious threat to our, mere, our, really our existence and, and our economy. But doesn't this confirm what I know you were among the first to say, Congress, that the pendulum has indeed swung back? away from what had been deemed to be a sort of a laissez-faire business that some abused and hence brought on these changes, to one that's going to be very big government at the expense of business. Well, I would modify that a little bit because I don't think we're swinging away from laissez-faire. I think we're swinging away from interventionism, which we, both Republicans and Democrats, have adopted over the last 35, 40 years. And the, uh, the, the blame is being placed on capitalism. They did this in the 30s. They said... It was the gold standard in capitalism that was so bad, and they had to change all that. So we've had interventionism to some degree since then, and especially in the last 35 years, but we've had pure inflationism and interventionism, and it's failed. But mm -hmm. Mises, the great Austrian economist, predicted that it would fail, just as he predicted socialism would fail and communism would fail. But he, he claimed, and I agree with him, that when interventionism fails, the tendency will always be to seek out more government and go towards socialism, and that is the question we have. We have to understand where we've come in, where we have come from, and where we're going, and make the decision. But so far, right now, it's very hard to win this intellectual fight and say that we can't blame capitalism. But if we let them get away with saying this crisis came on because of free markets and sound money, we can't possibly win. And this crisis came on because we did not have sound money and did not have free markets. The genie is out of the proverbial bottle. Uh, Ron Paul, thank you very much.